Welcome to the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network. You are about to listen to an episode of the Audio Signals Podcast with Marco Cipelli. In this new season, Audio Signals is repositioning its antennas, focusing not just on the stories, but on the storytellers. In our modern hybrid analog digital society, the art of storytelling has never been more vital or displayed such a diverse array of forms. Recognizing this, our conversations will spotlight the narrators, providing a unique exploration into the minds behind the narratives. From authors to podcasters, visual artists to songwriters, and everything in between, we will engage with all who contribute to this extraordinary tapestry of human experience. We are all made of stories, after all. Here we are, another episode of Audio Signal Podcast on ITSP Magazine with Marco Ciappelli, which is me. If you're watching the video, you'll see as usual, I, I'm not the kind of guy that does podcasting on his own because I feel I couldn't hold a half an hour on my own. And I know a lot of people that are really good at it, but I'm all about the conversation and, and Audio Signals again it's, it's about conversating with people if you're watching the video as i started to say you'll see there is darren mass with me hi darren how are you doing hello and uh, for those listening you heard you heard hello so that's that's good i'm not lying uh next step next step before i pass the ball to darren and, and it's gonna be a fun conversation he's a podcaster himself on top of other things before that i don't think everybody was just born as a podcaster we all have some other lives before we do that or even parallel to that and that's probably what bring us to to do podcasting in first place but again audio signals new turn this is the second episode of the new turn where it's not just about stories but it's about the storytellers what motivates them to tell the story the way they do the kind of story that they tell and in this case uh, it's gonna be good because it's actually the how (laughs) <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting uh, twist on podcasting, and I, I found it fascinating, and that's why I invited Darren to be on the show. So we'll, we'll get there. Enough about me, Darren. Again, welcome to the show. A little bit about yourself, and uh, yeah, that just start with your podcast, and then we go from there. Sure. Uh, a little about me. I am a tech person. I started my career in telecommunications, which is... Um, we all communicate through telecom, rather, right? It's voice or it's internet. And that quickly morphed into starting a company, selling that company, uh, feeling bored and irrelevant after that sell of the company and trying to figure out what the heck do I do next? I've always been a believer of following your passion, which is why I started a podcast. I love hiking and I went on a hike with yeah. a friend. With a friend or or, or non-friend, or you become a friend eventually after a hike, I guess. Uh, I think you bound, right? Yeah, I mean, (laughs) especially if there's some dangerous element in there, right? Oh, really? It's somebody's life and you're their best friend for a while. Um, But yeah, I went on a hike uh, with a good friend and he had recently sold his company. And the conversation that came from that was pretty powerful. We talked about how he felt after he sold his company and and the highs and the lows and the complexity. And, you know, you reach that holy grail, that moment that we all have been striving for as business owners and entrepreneurs, only to find out you're bored and you're depressed and you're no longer the CEO of a company, but you're some rich guy, but you're supposed to be happy. Anyway, got back home and I said, hmm, I should make a podcast about this. And I did. (laughs) And that's how the idea of I took a hike came about. I love it. I love it. And um, so we kind of talked a little bit before starting the conversation, but I I was wondering, my first question was, do you always and only have this conversation on a hike? So people need to make this commitment. You say yes. And I I think this is fascinating because it it filters, I think, a lot of people right there. It's not just going to be somebody that doesn't know what it's talking about, or maybe it's kind of like not too motivated. I mean, you, you, you force them to, how does it go? You, you, you bring it somewhere on your territory. Do you move around? You meet in the middle. How, how is that working? Oh, it's all this mystery. Um, so I do apologize. I would typically be on a trail with a camera in my face doing this, but we had a little bit of rain. I'm not afraid of the rain. I love it, but recording gear does not. 
So, yeah. so I didn't want to be under a big tent and an umbrella. So yeah, it is what it is. So give me this pass. Uh, but essentially you have to be hiking with me. We go on a trail. It's anything from an easy to an extreme hike. It really depends on the skill set of the guest and if they've been hiking before. Now, a lot of people have never hiked before. Um, that's okay. I find it to be actually more fun and exciting if you've never hiked before, because I get to explain all the cool things about the trail and how to follow a blaze. Uh, some of that makes it into the edit, some does not. I typically pick a trail that's equidistant between me and a guest, if they're a local guest. Uh, I pick the trail based on, again, the skill set and the personality of the trail. So trails have a lot of personality. And where I live in the tri-state area, New Jersey, there's well over a thousand trails to choose from. A lot of them, a lot of my favorite trails, I, I've hiked more than once. So I get to know the personality of the trail. And I know that sounds a little kooky, but no, it's it's true. Um, for instance, in two weeks, we'll be releasing an episode with a LinkedIn uh, marketing person, call her an influencer, I guess. Um, and uh, and there's this trail that I took her to that's equidistant between us from her house and my house, where there's a rock, a boulder, a huge boulder that was dropped off by a glacier. And it's sitting on top of three small stones about yay big, just floating there. And I knew when she saw that, that would have just blown her mind. And it did. And I'll give you a little teaser. She's yeah. very convinced aliens put it there. <laughs> All right. So we got we got some uh, extraterrestrial activity yeah. on the on the next podcast. That's cool. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's possible. So, you know, I don't think it's cuckoo at all. And we're all a little bit cuckoo when we are in storytelling anyway. We need some creative uh, vein, right? But when you said that the trailer has a personality, I, I, I believe you. I mean, I, I, I like the, outs, the outdoors myself. And, you know, uh, it puts you in a different mood. Um, yeah. I'm around L.A., so, you know, there are some are popular with the celebrities and, you know, everybody needs to go there. Others, they're a little bit more complicated. And then if you want to get the car, you go in the mountain, in the forest, and that's another completely different story. And it does put you in a different mood. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with that. And tell me, tell me about what do you see changing? Because I, I want to connect to the fact that, that on your profile, I see like a business therapist as yes. one of your qualification. Yeah. Um, so how do you think this therapy works and how it changed the trail, the whole environment, the whole mechanism on recording changed the tone of the conversation. I believe it changed the person attitude yeah. as well. Uh, so you, you said before, we're all a little cuckoo. We absolutely are. To live in the world that we live in today, we're all just a little bit nuts. And, you, you know, be. myself included, um, you know, like I said, I went through all these machinations of depression and not feeling a sense of purpose that hiking was my outlet. That was my therapy. By being surrounded in nature, you're literally bathing in, you know, good vibes, so to speak. Right. And and you get this energy that you wouldn't have gotten from just walking down a street. Same thing happens when I bring a guest out, whether or not they're experienced or not. Just being side by side, someone else in nature, having a conversation, it flows more naturally and you are far more open. Now, obviously, we're recording this. There is no overdubbing. There is uh, there's, there's editing for the sake of the fact that a three hour hike would not make a great episode. So we have to cut clips out. Right. But we put it together. It's it's raw. It's real. It's an authentic experience told by the guest of the show or that week's show it's their adventure journey and what i noticed you know i didn't put all this plan together but it just unfolded i noticed when marco you and i are hiking if i'm asking you a really pointed question you're not fabricating an answer you can't you're worried about where is that foot going to go so you don't trip down the side of a cliff or walk into some poison ivy or possibly step on a snake, which almost happened in an episode. You're not worried about any of that or about fabricating the story. You're worried about everything else. So the conversation that we have is truly 
your impression, your experience, right? And it's also therapeutic because when we have to memorize fabrications, I won't call them lies, but we all do that. We embellish. We're human, right? It, it's the Instagram effect. We, we went to that concert. And we were in the first 10 rows, weren't we all, right? That doesn't happen when you're on a trail in nature. And because of the microphones and the equipment I use, it's so small. I'm carrying most of the gear. All you have is a little pack and a little lav. It disappears with the conversation. The only time you remember we're recording is when I stop to take a selfie. Because <laughs> oh, I have to have some evidence we hiked, right? Well, you have to prove that you are living in these times. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You see my arm every time. It's great. But <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I love and I, I I agree, and it makes me think on how you you do that. I mean, already like the the big change of recording virtually, remotely. You're on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. Um, when I go to conference and I'm doing things there, sometimes you know we just put up a camera. A to a couple of labels, mics. We were in London not too long ago. If you go on the website, you can see it. And me and my co-founder, Sean, we just choose the big band as a background and we just talk about what happened during the day or we do an interview outside. It's completely different. And I'm thinking, I, I agree with what you said, especially when you're walking, I think you get more open. So tell me about, um, yeah, the kind of guest that, that you bring on the show? I mean, the kind of conversation that you have, but do you go all over the places? Do you have a theme? And sure. if that's the case, why? So I look for guests that are people that I would say are successful, uh, whether or not it's life success or business success, that's up for the audience to determine. I want to be surrounded by positivity. Right. And no, I'm, I'm not foo foo and kooky. I'm just saying that, you know, this was my therapy. So I wanted to be uplifted myself. I wanted to, to glean inspiration from others that have been there and done that. So it's obviously a business inspired adventure, which makes it kind of a challenge. So I have to look at people in the business world. Were they entrepreneurs? Did they have some great success with a product or a service team? Do they have this great career at a big company, a small company? Where can I learn from you? And where can the audience learn as well? Where's that challenging story of, you know, when you were growing up, you had to overcome something and then you rose to the top against all odds. That's what I'm looking for. It's hard to find that in everybody, but I really believe we all have some challenge that we had to overcome that led to success. And if, we have a great conversation. We're going to pull it out of you. Uh, we've had guests that are in rock and roll. Uh, for instance, Chad Taylor was the founding member and former lead guitarist for the band Live. Lightning crashes for those that uh, are not in a generation that knows, although you should. Um, last week's episode was the head of global security for TikTok, Kim Alvarella. She gave a great interview. Um, this Tuesday is the general counsel for NJ Transit, which is our metropolitan uh, transit line in New Jersey. Uh, he was also a former town prosecutor and a mayor. I had the mayor of my town on, and the list keeps going. We have future episodes with other rock and roll Hall of Famers and then nice. other influential individuals. So, you know, it's it the fact that we're tying business and life together has been something that I know I've been in search of for my entire career. And that's the, the fact that we all work the 60 hours plus, had no time for life and realized that, yay, I got paid, I made money. Well, why am I so miserable? And it's mm -hmm. because that balance didn't exist. So I also wanna find guests that find that balance, whether or not they found it just now, where they found it along the trail of life. I wanna hear that. And hopefully we can inspire others to think the same way or motivate themselves. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you already gave up quite a bit about yourself and, you know, the struggle after you sold the business. And and, uh, and I love this angle of connecting life with loving what you do. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to sound you know, predictable, but as they say, if you, if, you, <laughs> if you do what you love, you don't work a day in your life now. Sure. 
yeah, in an ideal world, but you know, a balance of the two, I think, uh, it's is is where the truth uh, the truth lies. And so uh, the approach is great, it, but because now my show is becoming a little bit more inquisitive about storytellers, I'm, I want to go there. So you told me about the story, how you tell them your your guest. Tell me how this experience has changed you. I mean, uh -huh. do you think you've been maturing as well? Do you think like, I'm curious, like you say, you, it, it loose the guest, you make it loosen in the answers. And how does it work with you? Do you have like preset questions or you're going freestyle as well? So what, what is it doing to you? Is it good? I think so, but I want to hear yeah. it. So from the physical I can now hike and have a full-on <laughs> conversation without breaking a sweat or getting out of breath. So I, I did notice on one of the last ones, we were deep in conversation and I, I wasn't struggling through it. So mm -hmm. physically, it's like any other activity. After a while, you just get used to it. Um, my hiking skills, skill points have improved. Um, you know, I went on a hike. Uh, I usually go between two and four times a week now. Uh, so we can make sure that wintertime we have enough guests to, to get through the winter. Um, but I noticed my technique, uh, instead of going straight down a, a declining path, I was taking it zigzag. Now, I had no thought behind that until I put thought to it. And the person I was with was asking why I keep zigzagging back and forth. Well, because the best way to go down a hill is in straight lines where you're not falling down the hill. So, uh, so yeah, physically, my skills have, have increased. Mentally, though, you said it before. I am living in a passion, right? There's there's no big revenue stream coming from this, right? The business-minded entrepreneur and myself, I know this is a very bad business model. The <laughs> ROI is not there. But the bank of just great feelings and inspirational stories and motivation, the happiness that I've been able to achieve from being outdoors from being in that environment, from having great conversations with guests, mostly people I don't know, um, you know, pair that with the physical. I, I'm personally in a, a much wealthier place than I ever was in that sense, right? The passion bank, I, I, you mentioned before, I'm a business therapist. I help small and medium business clients, entrepreneurs, business owners, partnerships kind of navigate their own path, get out of the thumb that's holding them down. And I've listened to my own advice more often than not. This is one of the pieces of advice I listen to. If you follow a passion, if you really love what you do, you're not working a day in your life, but revenue follows passion. Will I turn, I took a hike into a business with real revenue? Perhaps. If I continue doing something I love, maybe I can marry the two, right? The hobby and the passion with a business model, right? That's what this whole thing has done for me is it's opened up and expanded my, in a way, altruism to help others, including myself, as far as where my mental health has gotten. Now, I'm a very open book. I always have been. I pride myself on not lying so I don't have to remember lies. Sure, I've embellished <laughs> things like everybody, right? I have, I have perhaps misremembered stories. I say perhaps because I have, right? We all, oh yeah, I heard this story and it's, it's totally wrong. But I will say on the show, especially, I'm very open. I suffered from ADHD my whole life, uh, disruptive in class, class clown, all of that. I'm very open with it because there are limitations for the many that do have ADHD and how they can be held back. But there are also these superpowers that have been dubbed throughout the years by having ADHD. If you really truly can harness it, you can use that to your advantage. The majority of CEOs of business leaders have ADD, ADHD. So why is that, right? You're being held back. You're being told that you're the disruptive kid. You are. It builds a lack of trust and authority, which gives you a little push to want to do things on your own without authority in your way. Where it can also help you is you can task switch a lot quicker. I can lose interest in something like that and then hyper-focus in something else. Whereas the non-ADD, non-ADHD brain, the normal brain, 
doesn't want to do that so fast. Fast. It wants to finish a task, then move on. Right. So again, this for me has been a very thrilling adventure. And then for our guests, every single guest has finished their hike and thanked me for taking them out in something that was a little uncomfortable at first, pushing them through it, guiding them. And then they walked away feeling like they had a therapy session. The honesty effect plus the physical and the mental. Yeah, I love it. I'm thinking other occasions and show where you they create this. I'm thinking like you, you mentioned a few rock star. Um, I don't remember the name, but the the one that they go in the car and they singing in the car or something. The, the, yeah, what is his name? Cor Corbin. Uh, no, yeah, uh, James Corbin. Yeah, he, he yeah, does James uh, Corbin. karaoke in cars, and then uh, you have. Uh, yeah, coffee, and, and he, he's good. He, he puts people in a you know in a spot like you know I've seen like make Metallica sing some Lady Gaga songs or something like that, and they have fun. And I think yeah. it's because you put them out of their you know it's hard when you go and uh, in, in their in their own environment, the, the CEO in their office or in their meeting rooms, and they they're stuck. They are in that role. And uh, I'm not saying it's not a good interview, but it's a completely different story. It's more business. Yeah. It's less uh, person, character, individual, and, and less open. So, Well, what makes this interesting is you're right. If, if I have the same exact episode with a CEO at a board table, the CEO has their suit. Yep. The suit is the role that they're playing for the day. But if I took that very same individual out, on a hiking trail, the suit's no longer there. The real person is there. No. And the goal is to make you realize that sometimes your heroes, your mentors, they're just people struggling through a day, dealing with depression and anxiety and happiness and sadness and their kids and their parents and everything. And then they put this suit on and they're a rock star the next day, mm -hmm. right? We're all just people trying to make it. And then at the end, when we have to return that suit, no different than anyone else who's had to return a suit. Mm -hmm. Now, you're, you're definitely into something with this idea. I'm like, I'm, um, I'm really like going into the idea of different. I mean, we're talking about storytelling, but it's a spontaneous storytelling. You're not scripting this conversation. You're not telling someone, OK, you show up dressed like this or you know, we're going to play this game. But at the same time, yeah, we, we all play different characters in the in our in our everyday life. Either we realize it or not. When we're home with our family, when we are at work, when we are on a hike, when we go to, you know, rock on at the concert. So, you know, we, we are different, different people. And uh, yeah, what, what, what's your take on that? I mean, you, you come from... Um, media you said communication technology um you know i come from branding i think branding and marketing all the time um how is it happening in your opinion now this merging between having to be someone when you you know you gotta pretend you're in the in the first stand row at the concert or you know you have the the pyramid of giza in the back or maybe you never went there but you have to do something cool so you can post about it. So it's a little bit more, you know, sociological approach, but I think we we can talk about this because you, you are disclosing the true, let's say, persona of the people you talk to. How much are we fake? How much are we the real self? Uh, if you well, want to go there. I mean, I, I love this philosophical conversation. <laughs> I, open book. I, well, I love philosophical questions and, and scenarios as well. It's why we're why I take a hike with you, right? <laughs> um, you know, I think a real good balance is 50-50, right? You always want to include some of your personality in everything you do. How much of your personality really depends on your role, right? If you are a rock star, the real person, if you just want to sit on a couch and be lazy, probably not going to make the best rock star. So you do have this persona of being that rock star on stage. Now, how much you travel and how much you tour determines how much of that comes out, right? So we all have to put our suit on and we all have to play a role. You know, I'm doing it as well. When I'm hiking, I'm playing the role of a host. 
I'm listening intently, right? But what I tie into that conversation is the real person. So I would say I'm personally probably about 80, 90% the real me when I'm doing whatever I do in life. But if I had to go back to an office, well, that environment itself is going to alter how much of the real me you see. So for instance, if I'm working for a Fortune 500 publicly traded company, you probably can't hear some of the stuff I say in my personal life because it would be an HR violation or a concern. And that's the same for most people. You can't throw out that joke that you could throw around the dinner table with your family and everyone's laughing, ha, 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 right, in the office. So you do have to still be guarded. But I would say if you could try to find some balance of 50-50 of just being who you are, you know, sharing your opinions. If you disagree with somebody in the office, have a conversation about why you disagree and, and put in your personal values. You're going to be a much more balanced person. And I think you'll build more respect that way. Yeah. Good point. We need to we need to balance uh, the two things before we end. Uh, this is more of a thing as a, as a podcaster. So I have tried different things. Uh, we have tried different things when we go on location and you, know, you go to Singapore to a conference. They're like, do I really want to travel with a big mixer? And how am I going to connect everything for me? like an iPhone that become my camera and great recording system. It's like, you know, a blessing <laughs> from, <laughs> from the sky. Um, and I'm a home, uh, my home office. I like, you know, this heavy uh, microphone. So tell me about your, your tech that you're using as a, you know, podcaster to podcaster. Um, any discovery? Did you start with something? Did you forget yeah. to push a play button once and you were like, <laughs> ah, I yeah. lost that conversation? Um, I don't know if you read some. So I post a lot on LinkedIn. Um, I started that again for therapy for myself. Uh, so I did post something uh, about lessons that I've learned during podcasting. Oh, um, no, I didn't. So yeah, oh. I just went there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so. I, you know, I had a client tell me that I should write a journal and I don't like to write journals. So I used LinkedIn as my journal. Um, so yeah, so the things that I've learned from podcasting, one, buy the best equipment that you can afford. Because if you're going to be good at anything, you're going to upgrade. So don't start a hobby unless you really want to make it into, you know, more than a hobby in this case. So I did start out buying some lesser expensive gear and it wasn't quite cutting it. And well, I couldn't return it. So now I've got that as my backup gear. So lesson one, if you're going to do something, buy the best gear you, that money that your money can afford because you will upgrade it. Lesson two, do a ton of research and make sure that you know exactly how to utilize the equipment you have, how it works in certain environments. Test, test, test. And number three, don't forget to hit record. <laughs> yes, I went on a hike. And I forgot to hit record. And after two hours, we uh, we high fived. Hey, we went on a hike. Great job. Loved the conversation. I looked down, and the little red light was not mm -hmm. on. My heart stopped. Yeah, I feel so your pain. I've been there. Number four in in that ties back to number uh, one and two. Having a good backup. So luckily, the devices that I chose for my labs and the local recording, it works wirelessly. It also locally records split mm -hmm. channel for both myself and the guest. So we were able to save that. Whereas I wear another mic pack up here, um, a Zoom H5, and then that takes the wireless receiver and merges the two. It helps with less editing at the end. So I didn't hit record on the Zoom. It's right when I got the Zoom. But yeah, that, those lessons, those are gonna happen. Um, you know, as with anything audio related or new, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And that's okay, because I can tell you, I have never forgotten to hit record again. It's now ingrained in the fabric of my being to check the red light, then turn the hold switch on. So I can't do that, right? I had a mishap the other day where I have to actually hike again with the gentleman. I gave him his local mic pack, the transit, the transmit uh, mic pack, and I told him to connect the lab into it, and he didn't push it in all the way. And these little, they use a normal headphone jack, but if you don't push that all the way in a third click or a second click, yeah, I'm not getting any signal. And unfortunately I didn't get signal from his, so we have to go re-hike. 
I will never do that one again. In fact, I've taken three hikes since and each one I said, okay, give me your pack. I'm going to connect it. So, and then we do a, a mic test after that. So you will learn lessons. You will learn a lot. And those are really good. Yeah. And it, I think I wanted to go here because I feel like, I don't know. If, I, I'm going a little Marsha McLuhan here with the media is the message and, and so forth. But in, in our case, when you have experienced this thing and you try to to find the the technology the sweet the sweet to you the most like is sweet to you in the price point it's good for what you do obviously if you do outside as you do it's completely different from being here in the studio and it become part of who you are so kind of like the the medium it becomes part of the message and part of the character i guess even for the guest wearing you know the pack wearing the receiver and it already maybe put them in a completely different mood as well so uh it's really cool i mean i i hope that this keep working for you you turn it into a business sounds like you do have a quite of a business uh mentality i mean you already sold the company so i'm sure that was something good in there and uh yeah this sounds that sounds like fun so Let's. Uh, I'm gonna give you the the mic uh, for you know a, a call to action to come and listen to to your show. If people are interested, again, here's not a paid conversation at all. But I I'm a big supporter of um, other people that do what I what I do. I think that it's important what we do. Uh, we entertain people, we educate them. So I want them to listen to your show as well. Oh, thank you. So uh, for all of your listeners, if you want to be inspired, motivated, and entertained by successful-minded individuals, and you want to hear their hiking tales along the trails, tune into I Took a Hike on just about every podcast uh, streaming service, Spotify, Apple, Google, and all the other ones, or go to itookahike.com. And if you're not tired of hearing me speak now, you can get a, another dose of that along the trail. All right. I uh, I gave it a go and it's actually fun. And we didn't touch on the fact that when you're there, you listen to, you can hear that you're actually walking. <laughs> it's not a special effect. We're not adding a bed of uh, sound effect after that. So yes, yeah, so that uh, actually was, was part of a challenge is how do I pick up the ambiance and the birds and all that? So uh -huh. making sure you had the right mics and the right labs and the right settings and the gain set properly. Um, it's still a little bit too low for my own liking, but there are some big birds out there that you'll hear. Uh, <laughs> it, it's constant trial and error. You know, we wear the little furries on the lav just mm -hmm. to make sure that there's no wind noise, but that does cut down probably about a DB or two. So right, right. we'll get it know, perfected yeah. over time. It, it's part of the discovery. We, we are not uh, the, the, the BBC uh, podcast production that you can play the, the the background sound every time you say something it's a it's it's complicated and we didn't talk about post production but I'm sure that three hours to one hour it got it um, got its own challenge. So that was actually one more lesson is invest in a great editor because editing can take an okay anything whatever your medium is and just turn it into something great and when i say an editor i don't mean adding filler here or there i mean taking a boring piece of the content out now yep. you have to outsource to someone who's had their 10,000 hours you don't need yep. to learn that new skill unless it's a passion right there mm -hmm. but that is a very lengthy process and you know for me i'm close to these conversations so there might be part of this conversation that if I listen back, I think that's gold, but someone else might not and might be bored with it. So that comes out. And that's the difference of an okay experience for a listener into an awesome experience, having a great Agreed. editor. I agree, especially when you're recording two yeah. or three hours, for sure. That will be a big headache. In this case, this is as good as it gets people so i hope you everybody enjoy this conversation there are going to be many more i hope you get to know the storyteller uh, behind the stories that, that he tells and again um, i took a hike i hope uh, you guys go visit then come back here again and because there'll be more episode audio signal podcast and uh, of course in the notes there will be all the links to darren um, 
social medias, a few that he uses, and uh, and his website. And uh, that's it. Stay tuned. More audio signals coming to you from ITSP Magazine really soon. Take care. Thank you, Darren. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Audio Signals with Marco Cepelli. If you learned something new and this conversation made you think, then add this show to your favorite podcast player, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share the ITSP Magazine podcast network with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to connect your brand to our conversations and our audience, visit itspmagazine.com to learn how to sponsor one or more of our shows. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey.